Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. And the conversation is all about Fela Kuti, Nigeria's king of Afrobeats, forever in our minds, forever in the history of African music and just how much it shaped music in Africa and Nigeria especially. But um, when it came to the rock and roll, sadly enough, he, he didn't make that list. You know, fans had been encouraged to vote, you know, and vote for whoever they thought would make it. But um, it seems, you know, the instructions were not clear enough because Nigerians thought that even though, you know, Fela had made it to, you know, the top five, he was automatically going to get an induction into the Hall of Fame. But that didn't happen. Sadly, other people, you know, got inducted like Jay-Z, who um, did not make it into the top five. You know, so Nigerians are not very pleased about that. But the, the, the issue here is... The good thing, like his son has said, is that it doesn't matter whether he actually made it into the Hall of Fame or not, that the name Fela, you know, is forever etched in gold in music in Nigeria. And uh, really here to speak about this is Ajibola Ibaru, an intellectual property lawyer who joins us via Zoom. Good morning. Thanks for being here. Hi, Anne. Thanks for having me. So Nigerians are not very excited that Fela did not make the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And uh, they're saying, you know, if fans' votes didn't count, why were they asked to vote? So what do you think about that? Well, um, the emotions of the Nigerians who voted are very valid. But um, the process works in two separate ways. There is a popular vote, which is the ones Nigerians participated in. Then there's also a separate ballot, which has about 1,000 people who are musicians, artists, and in the music industry. And that vote apparently carries more weight in determining who gets into the um, Rock Hall of Fame. So the popular vote is important because it tells everyone that this is what the people feel. But there's also the separate ballot. And this voting mechanism is quite popular and used in the um, Academy Awards, in the Grammy Awards. So you have this event happening regularly where an artist who has an um, obvious impact and legacy in the real world has um, tens of thousands of votes. In this situation, Fela had the second highest um, just behind Tina Turner. But that individual still does not get in. So it's just two separate mechanisms that are being used. If we use only the votes of the fans, obviously Fela will get in. But once we take into consideration that there's a second voting system mm -hmm. that also decides who is going to get into the ballot, then I think we'll understand the decision that the rock and roll All right. Let, let's let's talk about diversity. You know, with the you know, like you mentioned, about a thousand artists who take part in the second voting system. Now, do you think that that yeah. might, you know, have its own flaws, um, you know, with uh, the diversity of, of musicians in that space uh, that may have not, you know, seen Fela as phenomenal enough to make it this year? Well, on diversity, I do not think it's a question of perhaps Fela being a black man or from Africa. I would say this, on the question of diversity, what we're really looking at is the music market, the voting mechanism, and the people who are going to vote. For example, I can assure you that out of the 1,000 people who make up this kind of academy, most of them are not really from the African continent. So it's more a question of them not understanding the sound and understanding the beat. And also concerning diversity, they have been making um, specific attempts to improve the number of black people the number of women and the number of minorities who are getting into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They are improving on their diversity. But I will stress more that it's about them not understanding the sound, about the Voting Academy not having enough, enough music industry professionals from this region who are able to advocate that this sound has the specific effect and has done certain things all over the world. They are just not as informed as they would be if they were from this market. Hmm. So talking about Fela, I want us to concentrate on his music, his sound and his impact. How would you quantify just how much you know, Fela meant for not just music in Nigeria, but his advocacy for you know, social political issues in the country? I will be frank with you. 
Fela is probably on God's status when we're talking about music legends. And he's been there since he started his work back in the 70s and 80s, especially in the international community. On the issue of him being uh, focusing on the social economic issues of the Nigerian state and all of that, in his own words, he explained it clearly that, look, music in general is for enjoyment, it's for entertainment, it's for love, it's to express the human experience. That is if your basic needs are met. But because of the country and the environment that you are from, your music has to be about struggle, about improving the quality of life of the people that you support and the people who support the music, which is one of the reasons why people generally have a, it's almost a godlike reverence for the work that Fela has done because mm. he had significant influence in the international community as an artist. And he decided and he chose to use that influence to push the quality of life of the individual citizen here in Nigeria. And to the best of his ability and the limits of his intelligence and creativity, he spoke the truth to power as best as he could and for as long as he could. But more to the point, he lived it in his own personal life. So we are talking about people of godlike status in the music industry um, business. You are talking about Fela, you are talking about Bob Marley, they are generally um, in the same category. Even wow. till today, they are essentially legends, especially when you leave the country. Yes, well, Mali, Felan, Lucky Dubé, there's so many of them. But I, now I want to, you know, speak about, you know, the relevance, really, of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, how relevant should it be uh, for us here in Nigeria and for Nigerian artists? And then, you know, do you think that we maybe should develop our own Hall of Fame that is able to uh, shed more light and focus a lot more on... Uh, sounds from Africa, instead of relying on, you know, um, um, uh, awards and Hall of Fames from Europe and from, the, from America? Okay, I'll take the second part first on whether we should develop our own um, award systems and not depend on the foreign economy for validation. I think it's a tricky question because um, participating in foreign um, programs like this generally suggest two things, that your local structures have gotten to the point where they are able to equal or even surpass the foreign, um, the foreign programs. That is what it generally suggests. Then there's also the question of validation. Now, that validation is really a reflection of the geopolitical balance and economic strength of the economies in the world, um, the first world and the global south. So that validation is always going to be tricky to, to shake off unless you've developed your local economy to the point where it can actually replicate those systems and surpass them. Because it's not enough to talk about your individuality as an African and as um, having a deep, diverse, ancient cultural heritage. You also have to have the financial and economic infrastructure to be able to promote it as it should be. That's what I would say on the issue of um, we really looking for validation. I think the solution really is obviously yes, we should establish our own systems, we should um, establish our own cultural um, positions. And on this note, I would like to suggest the, um, the example of the South Koreans. They've done phenomenally well and have built up their internal infrastructure to the point where they can actually compete on an equal footing with what is currently the global standard, primarily what comes from the West. And I'll give two quick examples. First of all, the, um, the Korean pop group BTS yes. is funded by the record company Big Hit, which has bought Justin Bieber's holding company that also has Ariana Grande. This is a South Korean company actually buying out a major American company with two of the biggest stars in the world today. They did not do that only by their South Korean heritage. They did that by the infrastructure they've been able to build. For example, having the fastest broadband in the world today. Yeah. So I think it's more important for us to focus on building those structures, which Absolutely. will be the foundation on which we can push our obviously rich, diverse, and ancient African music and heritage. All right. Um...
Just to uh, wrap up, we'd also uh, say prayers up for Sound Sultan, our own, you know, one of our own legends here who news reports say, you know, might be dealing with uh, throat cancer. Thank you very much uh, for yes. joining us this morning, um, uh, Mr. Ibaru Ajibola. Uh, good to hear from you. And of course, thank you for uh, having me. Thank looking you. Looking forward to more of these conversations. Good morning. All right, that's where we wrap up. Yes. Um, this Once beautiful again. Thursday morning, yes, May 13th, 2021. Um, catch up on all the conversation here on social media at PLOS TV Africa. And do follow our U new YouTube channel at PLOS TV Africa Lifestyle. Yes. I am Annette Felixin. Thank you for watching and bye-bye. And I am Osaogi Ogbawa. The news comes up at 9 a.m. Stay with us. Bye for now.